Hey everybody, it's Thursday and um, we're not going to be able to do this live today. We're in the northern woods and the northern woods doesn't have great Wi-Fi. And so we're going to pre-record this and I'll put it up there about 7.30 hopefully tonight and um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, it's going to be the same thing and I just won't be able to chat with you. I will let you know because I'm doing the shooting this right before I go on um, at 6.30. So we'll see what we can do. And so I'm just going to take this and we're recording it right now and we'll bring it back to you. So go back to my um, website, or actually to the YouTube channel, and you can pick it up there, all right? And so let me just uh, go through everybody, all you newcomers. Usually this is live, but we're just going to pre-record this. And so here um, is where you get all your information that we're in normally. And next week, probably the same thing. We're going to have to do it. Next week, I'm probably going to do it as a, um, as a plain air but here's where you get my stuff on my newsletter and my website at beckerhart.net. And you can also look at my supplies here. I put it up there just so you can see. You can always go back to this. Again, you can always go back. It'll be up here forever and ever and ever until <laughs> YouTube goes away, I guess. And here's our value study today. And we're going to change around the, the image a little bit when it comes to the fire. This fire that you see up here, and let me just show you really quickly. This fire... This part right here is the photographer, when he leaves his shutter open, it makes it look like lines. Those are usually dots. In real life, those would be dots, sparks coming off the fire. And it wouldn't be as, as smeary as this. Fire is not, you know, it, you do want to have some of the soft edges, but you want to keep it so that it looks more realistic than this. This is, yes, looks kind of real because it's a photograph, but when you go to paint it, we want to make it look better than this. And so here in the black and white, and so my biggest, contrast is the fire and the things around it and this uh last week on my newsletter let me just show you really quickly on my tabletop and um and you can see where i did this um on thursday so look at my youtube channel you can find where i painted this if you want to see this first you can let's see how i just painted fire it wasn't a picture of a fire it was more of a sketch of a fire but before we could do any of that the most important thing is we got um, to say cheers, right? And so today I am at a home of an artist, uh, Phil Babb, who is a great um, illustrator and watercolorist. Actually, he got into AWS twice already and also NWS. And so he's doing some great stuff. And he um, gave me my beer tonight. So cheers. We have a IPA India Pale Ale. Can you see it? Where is it? There it is. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. And thanks, Phil. <laughs> I'm up at um, Dillman's and I'll be in Manaqua and Hazelhurst to this week and so um, we're up north and so I we don't have, um, same thing at Dillman's we don't have very, very good um, Wi-Fi up here so we're just gonna like I said we're gonna pre do this picture and then we'll put it up there so we tried it and it's uh, I would be talking like this and then I would, uh, it would be like that so we don't want to do that <laughs> so we're just gonna go right through here and also this week if you noticed I put some uh, dip on my um, brushes. I got this grip stuff and that is going to be in next week's newsletter and I'm going to show you how I did this and made my uh, handles of my of my brush brushes all grip grippy. All right so we're going to show, show you that on next um, Tuesday. Next Tuesday's newsletter will have that video in there. And so here we go. Let's start with I already put the mascoid fluid, masking fluid on there. I use whole by masking fluid. I find it to be a really good masking fluid. And when you take it off, make sure you take it off slowly. And a lot of times I've told people to take it off with a uh, hairdryer also. Take a hairdryer, and while you're rubbing it off, it kind of loosens it up from the paper a little bit. Even, um, I know I've used the tape. You can use a tape. And as you can see closer up, that I kind of, let me show you it this way. Oh, no. <laughs> Not in my first scene, my first camera. But you can see it gives it a nice um, dark look so I can see where it's at. There's some of the masking fluid that's not dark enough. And so I really like the whole vines that they are a little bit darker. So we're going to start with light to dark, like we always do. And um, we're going to start with the background, work ourselves forward. And so we're going to go right away into our... And I know I have a dirty palette. I didn't clean it this week because I did the fire. And so I figured those, those, the colors for my fire are still here, right? Those are the same colors. So I'm going to use probably the same colors. So I might, why rinse them down the drain when I can have them, right? Watercolor paint's expensive, so we don't want to do that. And so I'm not wetting the surface first. I'm kind of doing my sun back here, a little sunset. I'm going to take it right through the fire, because the fire is going to be gold anyways, right? So 
why worry about that? Go right into the water, right into my sky. And normally I do my skies wet in the wet, but I'm wetting as I go along because I want to have the um, control of the paint throughout here. And so I'm just going to wet it now. I'm going to wet it in there. So well, let's see, I'm going to take maybe a kind of a violety blue for my sky. So I'll go with dip into some light blue, some dark blue, some violet. I'm just going to put that in there because it is like a sunset scene. And I'm just going through, and now you can see it. it um, the masking fluid kind of separates, and does, it shows you like where the <laughs> thing is kind of repelling the watercolor. That's kind of cool. Now I'm going to go in a little bit of orange and pink to go from the blue to a yellow. If I go from the blue to a yellow, what are you going to get? A green. And do you really want a green in the sky? No. So first, go with your red with the blue, or a pink, then to an orange and then to the yellow. So you don't want to have that green sky. Though there's times when the sky is green because that's what happens is the sun is really bright and you get the blue sky. So you get a little bit of green of ha haze in there. So that's kind of, that's fine. I'm gonna go right into the water because the water is just reflections of what's above, right guys? So I know normally we'd be chatting, you'd be asked questions, but you can still ask questions, but now I'm just gonna take a little bit longer to answer them because you can answer them in the comment section of the video. So just go in there and if you got a question, just put them down there. I'll still get to them, but they're just not gonna be in chat. They're not gonna be live chat. They'll be afterwards, after the fact. It'll still be fine. It'll still have, a, um, it'll still be the same video. It's just that we won't be able to talk to each other. <laughs> well, I'm talking all the time, so I'm, <laughs> I'll be talking to you. Maybe I'll just ask some questions. Maybe Phil can ask me some questions. <laughs> Phil's standing over here, so he's, he's watching, making sure I'm doing this right. And so we're going to be going into here. Now the background in the photograph, if you look up here in the upper left, if you see that, you see how there is a really dark, dark back there? I really don't want to make it that dark because it looks too um, contrasty, so it comes forward, right? It doesn't push back. So I'm going to make that land back there. I can do it while it's dry, or I can do it wet into wet where I get a soft edge. And I'm going to keep it to the colors that's back there already uh, because I know it's green, um, what do you call it, green trees back there. But because the sun is so powerful back there, I'm going to make it orange because it's taking the green and making it a dark. And so it's still green trees, but the sun is making it orange wise. You can put a little bit of maybe violet in there to darken it up a little bit, the orange. And do it while it's wet. You get a soft edge and remember to control your edges. Most important the way of controlling edges in a wet wash is just more pigment, less, less water, more pigment. So that's the background that you'll see for the, see how it's different it is in the photograph. I'm not using the photograph colors. Why? Because it's too dark. This is a little bit lighter, so it pushes back and I want it to be pushed back. Now I'm going to go and do these trees that are right here. And this is a reflection of those trees. I didn't do anything there yet because it's going to be dark, but again, I'm not going to be as dark as the photograph photograph is too dark and there's no movement in the water because it's like glass because there's no movement. I'm going to put a little movement in there. Irving Shapiro, my mentor, always told me that you should never make the, a mirrored glass image of the water because you won't know which way the painting is, upside down or right side up. So I want you to know what side is up and down. So we're going to, we're going to put a little bit of waves in that. Because if you make it so, super sharp, and I'm going to make my green. I am going to make a little green with purple, blue, my cronacridum gold. Now there's a green. And I'm going to make it thick enough that I can stop it from bleeding too high up. And it'll look like the tops of the trees. And I, again, don't ever use just a couple of one color. I use a couple colors in there. You see purple in there. You see green in there. And you do it in a wet wash because this is the background. And as I go towards the sun here, I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it too. And actually right around the fire, I should probably make that really orange because even though it's in the distance, you're still, you're looking through the fire. So if you're looking through the fire, you want this to be orange right there, right? So the edge of the fire would make it look bright because this is my light source and that's my light source. I have two light sources on this one. And actually I kind of covered over my sunlight up here. So I'm going to pull a little bit of the water out and put a little yellow in there, yellow and white. 
actually kind of went in there, so I'm going to put that a little bit lighter yet. So you can add white in your yellow. It's not a sin. Nobody's going to, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to arrest you. It's okay. And now over here are plants that are um, a little bush and stuff that's going to be lighter. Now, do I want to go around it? I should have put up my masking fluid there now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, well. So I'm going to put it in opaque-wise. And so I'm just going to go over this and put it in with an opaque. If you wanted to have that those plants, if you look in the corner, the plants are lit up by the fire that are in front, then I would have to put masking fluid over that so I can keep the background nice and fluid. I wasn't thinking about that. So we're just going to do it with an opaque in front of it. Oh, and again, I'm going right over the fire with a dark color. Oh, everything is fixable though. Don't worry about that. You can fix everything in watercolor. You can either just pull it out or add another color or pull it out all the color completely and then just go back in with a lighter color. You can scrub out. Now I'm going to do the water reflection. I'm just going to go down here and put the reflection, reflections in. Put a little bit more yellow. And actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all this dark out by the fire here and replace it with a yellowish orange because that's a fire and we want to put that in there. And so I'm kind of rubbing out this area because I made it a little bit too dark right there. But I just put it right on top of it. And it's still wet, so you're going to get a nice soft edges. Put a little edge in there. And now let's go with some... Oh, look at that. A little watermark. That you can do nothing of until that dries. I accidentally dropped a seed of a little water. That's going to have to be the moon. <laughs> now we'll show you how to fix it. No big deal. Just don't do anything to it while it's, uh, while it's doing its thing. Because if I go there, then everything will be kaput. <laughs> so we want to keep that, keep, keep your hands and feet away from that area. I'm just going to go in here and get the nice colors in, into the fire. Light, light bright colors. And I have the masking fluid there, so I'm going to get back to the white, no problem. It's just that looking through the fire and seeing around it, I want to keep that a little bit more vibrant with a yellowish orange. And so I'm just floating it in the pigment and floating it into the water. And it looks like I'm getting really dark, but I'm not because, again, I have masking fluid there. So the masking fluid will take care of my white again. Now I do want to bring these rocks in the front. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so now we're going to go do our rocks in the front and then the back here because they're going to be nice and light and vibrant. And so in, a, in about, about 10 minutes, I will stop for a second and let you guys know because uh, you'll be all waiting for my live, <laughs> my live show. And then um, I'll be stopping for a little bit and I'll be talking to you live and tell you to come back at about 7.30. <laughs> so. All good. It's all going to be good. Now, so this is going to be plants that I want hard edge. So I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just putting in my lights. Putting in my lights here. And I'll put some lights up here because then I get a negative paint around these little, around those little bits of foliage over there and the bushes over here. I put a little bit more of this in the water. And actually, it should be a little bit more of the sky color right here, too. So let's go in there with a little bit of blue. Look at it right over the yellow. If you let it float, you can put any color on top of any color. It's all about floating. Float that pigment. Now that's white. That's going to be like a yellowish white. So I want to get a little bit of that glow. Because a fire is the light source, so you got to make it glow. Everything around is glowing, and so these these leaves and stuff will be glowing. These rocks will be glowing, and then of course its silhouette around the rocks will be the shapes of the rocks themselves. So first you do your lights like always. We always do our lights first. That's going to end up being like um, a kind of a neat thing up there. I'm not sure what it is, but it'll be something <laughs> neat. <laughs> All right, let's go into our dark rocks now in the front here. I left one and two little pieces for the for the for the fire. 
leaves. All right, so now it's got a nice dark, dark. So the dark in the front here, I want warm. So it brings it forward a little bit. So I'm just gonna go in with a nice warm color. And so what I dip into, I dip into a light red, I dip into a dark purple, into a lizard crimson, and I just kind of dump it on there. Now this is dry, so it's not floating. So I put a little bit more water in my brush so I can float these things a little bit better. Because I'm doing it around a hard edge because it's dry, the paper right there. And then over here, we're gonna, that's going to be into a wet wash. And so there I needed more pigment so it doesn't bleed so far. The more pigment, the less it'll bleed. And then I'll go in here and add. If you could do your whole painting soft edge first, that would be the best because then you can get some really nice edges, nice softness to it. And so I try to do as much as I can when it's soft. And then later on when it's all dry, then it's easy to go back in and get your, get your hard edges. Seven minutes. And so now we're going to go in with our smaller brush. And first we're going to take another cheer. Cheers guys. IPA. Indiana Pale Ale. Very good. I rated it a number about a 10. 10 um, paintbrush. <laughs> I rate all my beers by paintbrush level. And I go to 11. I go to 11. I don't stop at 10. So the best beer is 11. What well, beer is that? Um, we haven't had many of those yet. <laughs> we, <have> to, <laughs> we still have to figure that out. <laughs> um, there was a, um, a Belgian beer that's pretty good. That um, I mean, Right now I'm, for, I'm forgetting the name. But yeah, there's a couple of beers that are pretty good. So far I've only had about a lot of 10s. A lot of 9s. It's got to be really decent for 11, 11 paintbrush. So here we go with the, um, this is all still wet, and so I'm getting soft edges here. And actually, it's kind of damp, and so I will get kind of a watermark. But for foliage and for grasses, that's kind of a good thing. You kind of want that sometimes. It's nice to have that look where, where it um, has those little fingers that look like, like what's happening up there when you make a watermark. Sometimes that's a good thing. You don't always want to have, you know, hard edged and but you don't want it all soft edge either so a little bit of both and then maybe even this kind of look where it is a little bit looking like a watermark I mean that's what watercolor is there's so many different things you can do with it and that's one of the things it's not a bad mistake unless it's not not what you wanted <laughs> like that I didn't want that there but so that is not good but it's a neat kind of effect I could have used that somewhere else though <laughs> so here we're gonna put this little plant in here and so what I'll do is I will let I uh, will stop in a second and in about three minutes or so four minutes I will tell you guys that to come back <laughs> and I'll stop this video and then I'll replay it and then I will we will I will put it down after I get done with it I will um, post it to YouTube but that probably won't be about 7 30 8 o'clock tonight or if you want to watch it later on, then watch it anytime after that. It will be up there and with no interruptions and you'll see everything real time and know where it would sound like this. <laughs> we don't want that. So we're just going to leave it at that. All right. So let's just stop this for a second and I will get back to you in just a second. All right, we're back and here we go. We dried it off. I had dried it. It's, uh, dry was actually was a good thing that um, I got a little time off here. And so I dried it, and then I took the masking fluid off. Masking fluid was on there, and there's maybe a little bit still on there. And you can take um, you can take tape. You can do that. You can take tape, put it down, and rip it off. You can take a needle rubber eraser, rubber cement pickup, and you can even take, and you can do it while you have a hairdryer on it, too. Sometimes it loosens it up a little bit, too. But what I'm going to do now is going to go from the lights to the dark in my details. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and get my and shape my flames like I did on on Tuesday on my Tuesday newsletter video and I'm just gonna which is this one right here and see I just um, you go in here and get all these little light areas that and so you're forming the shape of the flame because even a flame has dimension it's not just a flat piece of paper a flame it's got a back and a front a top a side and so you can 
kind of think of it as like this as all light and um, as it goes away from the center it gets a little bit darker like in the picture you can see it gets a little orange as it goes away because the light is diffusing as it goes away from the main source of where the light is coming from down here a lot of times it's always centered because of the most flames that's where you're going to get most of the light right so you're going to kind of kind of get that feeling and so i'm going in there with my lights and i'll get darker and darker as i go along i'm trying to think of what's in the back what's on the side and so like on the side i'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of orange and maybe a whole area maybe this whole area right here is a little bit like in the back and so i'm pushing through you're seeing through and i gotta watch out that i don't get rid of all the white because if i get rid of all the white um i'm gonna have to put it in opaque wise and so i don't want to get rid of it total totally but i do want to get rid of some of the white that's why we put the masking fluid down there so we can do this wash behind it and so basically yellows right now and even these dots these dots are not going to be white they're going to be a little bit of yellow here and there so i'm just going to tap on them I'm going to rub it in with my finger a little bit so that it just is there. All right. And watch as you keep some uh, uh, a pattern of white going through. A lot of times the white sticks together, and the color version sticks together a little bit, like the it's like the values stick together. So there's not just a bunch of dots all around of different values and colors. You kind of group it together, group group little values together. Now on these rocks over here, I'm going to put a little bit of water down, leaving a hard edge, but I'm going to put a little bit of a lighter color on top of the dark color and just floating it because I got a little bit too dark right there, but that's okay. I just go back in with a little bit of color, float it. It'll look transparent, even though it isn't transparent now because I did put it over. The thing is you don't want to do is a hard edge with um, lights on top of darks because then it looks like a different kind of, um, it looks like tempera or um, gouache. So you want to kind of keep that soft edged a little bit. That being said though, sometimes you do want to keep it hard edged and just make it um, where it's wet on the inside and then it'll just be a hard edge. And so you really won't be able to tell that the hard edge is um, opaque. And if it is, that's sometimes okay too. So I'm going in here just creating shapes now. I'm looking for the shape of the rocks and this is going to be outlined with a dark because the rock is facing towards the light and that's what you're going to show light and behind that rock is going to be dark and then i can create another rock by using the side of that rock so these are the rocks around the fire pit this fire pit happens to be rocks this is not my photo but it looks identical to a place i go to in canada that my aunt has and um this looks like outer lake and so it's not the outer lake but it looks just like it it's almost like here too everything about it almost is identical to outer lake so a lot of these pictures look a lot of the same if you've been to a lake with a fire pit on the lake a little bit they are going to look pretty close i'm getting darker and darker in my in my fire and you, you gotta get that light in there and the fact that you need to the orange part is like the edges usually so i'm first going to put in the yellows and then i'm going to go with pretty bright orange i'm using brilliant orange for my orange and i'm just going to float that into the yellow and then some spots will be hard edged for anybody that's new here for the first time normally it is live um, we're not we're recording today and going to post this on later and um, but for all those newcomers also i usually lay down a towel uh, a white towel on my thing and I, you can tell i use it everywhere um, thank you phil for um, supplying a a towel i didn't bring one this time forgot about that but phil has donated a beautiful towel <laughs> it, came with the house. it came with the house nice <laughs> and now it will be bleached and used again and again and again as a towel to put on after you sign it after i sign it yes i will sign it <laughs> i have to sign it in permanence so that when you wash it it will not come out
And this, um, since I'm up in the North Woods, yeah, you may not get great reception, but boy, the, the views you get around here up in the Northern Woods are just gorgeous. Stuff like this, you know, how where else can you get stuff, beautiful stuff like this? It's gorgeous. Next Thursday, I will probably be doing it live with my phone, and so I'll be out there on plein air painting. And so I'm not, I don't have it picked out yet, so there will not be a picture in the newsletter that you're going to be able to do beforehand. You'll have to do it after also, because I will be picking it out as we go. Wherever I get reception, basically, is what's going to happen. <laughs> i got to find reception first before I can do the videos. So here we come in here. And then you're going to get some really dark darks in this in here also. It's like I said, you're going from from a lighter light and then you're going all the way dark. And then you go with a really nice dark where the the boards that are burning in the fire. You can just like right here, maybe we'll put one coming in there. And then it's blocking this sun because it's laying on top. So you can put a few of those in there. And again, this is not the fire that's in the picture. The fire in the picture is very boring. It's just straight up, right? I mean, if you want to try that, go ahead. But I, I like to give it a little bit more shape to flames and stuff because the, the flames in the one in the photograph is, to me, very boring. It's just straight up. And then you got lines for the, for the little sparks that go up. And the sparks are not lines, but because the photographer closed the shutter or opened the shutter, left it open for a while, it's picking up lines because that's what it's recording and so I, I didn't want to do that I want to keep it more towards like a realistic when you're out there those are little sparks are coming off the fire and so I'm taking and you're going to see through here a little bit in the background I still want to put in then anything away from the fire you always got to remember which way is it pointing and which way is it which parts are going to be dark so anything pointing towards the fire is going to be lit up Anything away from it is going to be dark. And you can make it really dark too. A nice transition like back here is going to be really dark. And then the front will be really light. And it just really shows you then that the light is forced in this direction. And then the shadow. And so for that, I'm taking black and a color and just putting it right in there. Don't be afraid of using black. And, the thing, and if you want a colorful black, just use black and then a color. You know, you can just start out with the dark and then add a the color to that black. I use peach black, which happens to be a warmer black. But um, I always can put a color on top of it. You know, let it float in there with a warm or cool. But you know right away you get a nice dark dark. And you want to get your darks. You don't want to build up on your darks. You just want to get them in one shot. Those, those are the best darks. And so here I'm going to go around this little edge here to show the shape of the top of that rock. And then I am going to do a no-no, and that is to put in opaque. We're putting in opaque leaves over here again because I was too lazy to to put in the the masking fluid over here. These little leaves and this little bush over here is now going to have to be opaque. And so I'm using white with my watercolor. It's still watercolor, but it is will it will be considered an opaque wash right here because. I need to be these to be light, and I, like I said, I could have put them in with a little masking fluid and then color them afterwards, but I didn't do that, so they're going in like this. And actually, sometimes I feel that I'm doing an acrylic class tomorrow in in um, Hazelhurst in Manaqua for the Lakeland Art League, and I'm going to teach them how to use the acrylic like watercolor. And then that we do use a lot of um, thicker paint, and so I kind of got this technique off from that because it looks better that way. <laughs> Instead of leaving it alone or trying to get it beforehand, hey, you can get it afterwards too. It's not, it's not a big deal. And I find I get some really cool looking things by that too. So now we'll take our rigger brush to get the little branches, and we're pretty close to almost done. We're going to go in here and just get our little bit of dark um, branches. And this rigger brush. And I actually do like the grip the grip I just put on there. So watch them up for my um, newsletter this week. You're going to show you how to put a plastic grip on your brushes. And it also protects them too. 
because I do it all the way up to the ferrule, and so nothing can get in there, nothing can get around it. It's like a little covering for your handles, so water won't be getting up in there anymore. So just something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I saw this commercial many, many years ago for this plastic stuff, and so finally did it. And I, and I think it's going to help protect my brushes a little bit. So same thing over here. I'm going to put these little, little um, bush leaves. Put them over here. Put them over here. I do like the color of this. These little pinkish, orange kind of colors here. And what you want to do is group some of them together, like always. Don't just put dots out everywhere. That's okay for up here. And even when I did these dots, I kind of group them a little bit. So that they're not just all separate like stars. Stars are good to separate around a little bit, but even there, it's not a good design to keep everything separate. So I do like grouping things a little bit. It's a better design to group a bunch of stuff than having it just dots everywhere. Because that doesn't give you a kind of a look like a little bit more over here, a little bit less there. So variety. That's the spice. So that's here. So always start out with the big heavy stuff, and then even in the fire here, I can put a couple little washes in that are a little bit opaque, and just kind of throw it in there. And there's also lines sometimes in the fire. I noticed that in the one um, picture I was taking, that there's a little white line that can go through. So just take your rigger brush and then just kind of fill it right in there with a little line of fire. Started thinking about uh, uh, the man in black, the ring of fire. <laughs> what was that singer's name? Um, Johnny, Cash. Johnny Cash, the ring of fire. All right, a few more yellows in there. It doesn't seem yellow enough. So I'm going to spot some yellow. And I also try to get some soft edges in your fire. Not, not everything has to be um, hard edged from your. Because when you put in with your. Um, with the masking fluid, it gives you really hard edges. So it's nice to soften some of those edges up a little bit by putting a little bit of the yellow and just letting it float over the white here and there. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit more white together. Again, even in a fire, it's good to have sections that are just all a little bit more white together. Having things just separate all by themselves and dots around is not a good design thing. You, that's how come you're doing big washes together. Now I want to show you, and the, Tina would be asking me right now to fix this because I totally forgot that. So Tina, this is for you. I know you would ask me, why didn't you fix that? So here we go. We're going to fix this little spot up here. And so what you do, you take some, you take your brush, clean it out really good. Now I can't just do that one little spot, so what I do is I take water and I kind of go over real lightly. And then I take my bigger brush, actually, probably better than, oh man, that's really dirty, that brush. <laughs> so, and so what you do is you kind of go over this area and basically maybe use a little bit cleaner water than this I'm using right now, but it'll still be fine. I'm going to be putting some more color. Then I'm going to rub it really lightly right here. So I got to get rid of the looseness of the paint because it kind of sunk into the paper. And so I'm getting rid of that line that it made. And then I go a little bit farther than where it's at. Because if, if you're using clear water, nothing should happen on the edges because you're just using clear water. You're just wetting it. And I'm aggravating this part right here where it kind of get me a, a little bit of a white line or a, a watermark line there. So now I'm going over with just clean water. Well, not so clean, but clean enough. <laughs> and then I'm going to take the color that I had underneath there, which is a little bit of this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And then you just come over it. It was kind of in this field. And so I'm just kind of going over. Just kind of float it in there. And hopefully you're working on a paper that you didn't scrub it enough to wreck the paper. You don't want to wreck the paper, you just want to get it so it's you get rid of that little line that was there in the beginning. And remember I used a little bit of pink afterwards too? I'm going to use a little bit of that. And even if you use a little bit of opaque, that's fine too. 
it looks better than than what you had with the watermark if you didn't want the watermark then just go through there so down here I'm getting a little bit too much blue so again dip into your pink and since pink has a little bit of opaqueness to it that's okay too we'll just float it as long as you're floating it you're good you're good to go and actually since I have this wet why not put another little cloud in there a little bit of cloudiness like there's a little cloud coming in here so that way I can take care of it too a little bit a little cloud nothing wrong with a little cloud here and there see you can always re-wet an area you can redo an area you just have to be careful put down the water and then float your pigment and I think we're almost pretty good with this right let's take a look at it in the picture I like to look at it in a, um, in a photograph or step away from it for a little bit or get away from it by looking at it on your phone take a picture of it with your phone because it's smaller and makes things more together a couple of little black little things over here silhouetted and then I think we're almost good and then I will post it on and so maybe you'll see it about seven or eight o'clock well it's seven o'clock already so it's gonna be eight o'clock <laughs> All right, so let me think. Anything else? See anything, Phil? Any questions? Can you sign that towel? Yeah, <laughs> I will sign the towel. I need a, I need a um, permanent marker. Yeah, yeah. There next to your towel. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the Sharpie. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to be it. I don't know, a little bit darker. So get a couple dark things in here. So nice to have it on the screen in front of me. If I can really see, like it's a distance. All right, so we'll assign Phil's tabletop cloth here. <laughs> oh, you can't even see it on that thing. <laughs> There we go. All right. Let me take the tape off and we'll be good for another Thursday night paint along. Sorry again about the um, thing, but I think it'll be just fine. And most of you painted afterwards anyway, so we'll all be good. Let me just um, keep your fire, practice your fire. Maybe if you want to practice it first on the other sheet of paper like I did, like I did this other one before, uh, the day before. It's always good to try something before you actually go into a real painting. So there you have the one today, and here's the one from on Tuesday to show you um, that maybe practice. If you feel uncomfortable with trying to do it on a, on, a, on a painting, then at least try it on a scrap sheet of paper next to you. All right, so I think we're good. <laughs> Those clapping, so I must have done okay. I guess it's pretty <laughs> decent. <laughs> and there's my signature up there. So guys, thanks again. Uh, sorry, Ben, we'll see you next Thursday. Outside. We're going to be outside next Thursday, all right? Talk to you later. Bye-bye.